What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, July 30th, 2021. I want every host, Greg Miller, alongside the future class of video games. Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. Greg, I've been messing with my light settings. Yes. So I have these Elgato key lights in front of me, sure, and I've been me going too. back and forth but between 3% which is this this darker percentage, yeah. which I, t I typically have on my shot. I've always had 3% on to 4%, which uh -huh. makes things slightly a bit uh, sure. uh, more visible, right? There's more light, but I don't know which is better at this point. Going between 4%, which I have here, and then 3%. Because 3% feels like I'm ooh. sitting in darkness. Yeah, but it looks good. Bless, it makes bless, you pop. bless, bless, mm. bless. What you should do is switch the light so the light is aimed at the wall and then crank it up to like 60%. It's dope. Really? That's what I'm been doing. So it's aimed at the wall. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's a bounce. Back. It's a bounce. Why did you ever oh, like backwards? Like Nick Nick told us all to do it. I literally did it because Nick was like, "That's what I've been doing." That. You're well aware exactly. that I will not listen. No to worries. It. I'm no sorry. Worries. I'm not going to listen. Plus, if you want right? to try it, the chat will wait. Blessing, here's I'll what try, I'm I'll try right it now. after that. After Blessing, this, that right sounds now, crazy. Just, just for fun, Blessing, what if we crank it up to 100? I've never seen. Oh, dude! Oh my god! All right, let's do it. Well, that's everybody. Prepare your eyes. Prepare your eyes. I'm Let's gonna crank it up. No. Uh, I Greg, be, uh, Greg, your gonna... camera is gonna your camera's gonna take that well. Watch, it'll adjust. Me? Bless, I don't think yours will. Okay. Oh wait, these aren't my sunglasses. For the record, on my Elgato key lights, shout out to Elgato. I'm running six percent right now. That's the thing. You you have the reflection. You can crank it up to sixty percent. Yeah, well, I got that white wall right in front of me. I could do that no problem. But I'm saying yeah. what will happen when I crank it up to 100 right here with my good Oh, yeah, it's going to blow you out here. for a second. Uh, this is this is cool. This is one of the best episodes we've done so far. I, I'm just saying, like, the audio listeners are like, man, I'm bored. But, like, when they hear my, your reaction, Kevin, you have to sell the reaction of what they're about to say. Well, I mean, right? it, uh, look, I'll only react if it's worth it. Oh, my God. Right, bless fine. your glasses look great. What is this? Blessing. So don't do, really nice. yeah, don't do anything. Don't do anything. We're going to go three, two, one, go. And then on go, crank it to 100, all right? Okay. I'm scared. Me too. I'm very nervous about this. This could blow up the entire house. Maybe this will yeah. suck up all the power in the neighborhood. I don't know. Three, two, one, go. Crank it up. Oh, 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 oh there oh. it is. Look it's at the right. auto adjusting. The, the like camera auto the sun. They it's both like being auto adjusted the really well. Look at the, I feel like look I'm right sunbathing at the light. right now. Can you look look right at the light so we can see the reflection? Yeah. You see wow. It? Not with your actual eyes, you idiot. The sun. I wanted to see what it looked like with my real eyes exposed. <laughs> I wanted to see what my real eyes exposed. Now, would look I do like. have another light over here that I can turn Holy up as shit. well. If I turn that up, oh, oh man, <laughs> I'm so lit up right now. Holy cow. All right, I'm taking it back to Holy six. Holy cow, it's like being at the beach. Six. All right, we got a show to do. Beach, I can't be doing it. I can't be Look, can't look be at the camera auto adjust, guys. I That's the power like the of beach. Sony. Is the beach ever that bright? Yeah, it gets really bright. That's it? Yeah, it that burns you. That was like a nuclear you're going, flash. You're in San That's Francisco, not... Greg. You're not going to the actual beaches. You're going to these diet San Francisco Fair. beaches. Go to Miami Fair. someday. I'm going to Ocean Beach. Beach. <laughs> I'm sitting there in a sweatshirt. It's still cold. Yeah, I know you. I know what I got there. Uh, if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Today, we're going to be talking about the fact that Jeffy Grub Grub says Horizons may be getting delayed, like Greggy Greg Greg's been saying the entire fucking time. Listen to me. Uh, Destiny 2 is getting closer to crossplay, and Playdate turns out is pretty popular. We'll tackle all this and more because, as I already said, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every weekday on a variety of platforms. We run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, you can be part of the show, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Over on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, you can write in with your questions, your comments, your concerns, everything under the daily video game sun. Then, of course, on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, you can get every show ad-free. You can get every show with the exclusive post show. You can get exclusive access to the live recordings of the games cast. You can get the ad-free versions over there. You can get the Kind of Funny Next Gen podcast that's Patreon exclusive. All this and more is waiting you for a couple of bucks over on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. You can watch us record the show live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, just like Turbulent Turtle is, Crown Prince is, and Kebabs on TV is. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so I can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, rooster teeth, and listening on podcast services around the globe each and every weekday. Housekeeping for you, we put up a very special message over on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames to an eight-year-old boy named Henry. I encourage you to go check that out and send him your well wishes. Uh, the movie crew is reviewing Jungle Cruise today, and it'll be up on youtube.com slash kindoffunny soon. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Blackjack. Just him, actually. Thank you to our Patreon producer, Blackjack. 
Greg, as, as, as you're about to trans transition, because I know we're about to get into the Roper Report, I do want to shout out that video message to Henry is one of the most beautiful things I've seen in the last oh, month. Oh, thank you. Like, you know, I, I'm a millennial that is, that wakes up in 2021, right? And I, I wake up, and the first thing I do is I go to Twitter to sure. scroll just so I can be miserable uh, first thing <laughs> in the morning. And that was one of the first things that popped up. And let me tell you, there was not a more heartwarming thing I could wake up to. Like, oh, I legitimately was tearing up at my bed. Uh, of course, ladies and gentlemen, I, I made a vague tweet to this uh, uh, this past uh, week uh, or yeah, last week, two weeks, whatever, uh, about the fact that I had, had two different, very different emails uh, to my inbox. Uh, one of them was this uh, message from Henry's father saying, of course, Henry is an eight year old boy going through uh, chemotherapy for lymphoma, lymphoma uh, and he loves kind of funny the stuff he can watch because his father does make sure he doesn't watch all of our shenanigans. Uh, and he loves the streams and he loves Snow Mike Mike and he loves Greg and he wanted a message from it. So me and Mike did that and had some help from our friends at Xbox uh, to make for a truly special video for Henry. Uh, hopefully you'll see Henry uh, very soon on kind of funny uh, or twitch.tv slash kind of funny games because he, he's going to come play Fortnite with us. Uh, the video is up and going for it. But uh, the long story short on what I was saying there is that uh, got two very different messages, both about uh, very obviously serious life events. And I tweeted out, of course, the fact that I wanted to thank everybody for letting us into your life. Uh, you know, I've said this a million times, but obviously on the daily, I probably don't say it enough that I am very well aware of the relationship kind of funny has is, as a company. I me as a host whatever you want to say it to you the kind of funny best friend and as of course we always talk about we might not know each other uh, by name i might not know what's going on in your actual life but you invite us into your ears and your living rooms and your tvs and your podcasts and your car every day and that means that we're there with you in the good times and the bad and i know the weight that carries to be part of your routine i know that we can either be a distra distraction from the bad stuff we can be celebrations in the good time and we're happy to take on that role and proud of that role and you know i think it's what makes us so special is that we are a small company doing cool things with a cool community that we love and loves us back and so you know it's my life's greatest honor to be there uh with you uh in whatever way you let us into your life and i think that i speak for everybody on that front so thank you thank you all very much blessing these exactly. glasses look great thank you i appreciate it i was gonna take them off earlier but i the more i look at myself in the monitor the more I'm like, like, oh, I'm like, now. On. yeah i'm too committed yeah. and i look too good with these glasses greg now you know since we're still here it's friday mm -hmm. it's a shenanigans kind of episode i don't know about you blessing are you exhausted because i'm exhausted I'm actually not that exhausted. I, you probably had a bigger week than I have because I've been chilling. We did our core stream yesterday. had a good time. Then right after that, time. we yeah. did an Annapurna stream, which I also had a great time a great during. Time yeah, yeah. And then I was going to play Knockout City afterwards. But uh, I think you so were I, supposed I can... to play Avengers with me and you said, and I was. Barb. Yeah, I was supposed to play Avengers last night with you guys, but I ended up getting distracted by a game of Clue that I was playing with the friends. Oh, God, you're still about this Clue game. A huh? wild game of Clue. Oh, my God. It was such Talk a good game. Talk about a Kevin. boring game, Greg. It was such a good game. Boring. I, I got so close. I got so close to guessing the correct uh, clue answer, but I got the I got the location wrong, and it yeah. was heartbreaking because uh, I, I you were thirty it percent to wrong. I Remember, narrowed... quadruple XP and Avengers goes on all weekend long, so you still have time to get in there. I will be playing. I'm trying to max out my champion levels on Captain America, so I got a lot of stuff. I'll, Are you I'll playing for sure, I'll for sure get in there this week. Well, anyways, while we're still in the nonsense portion of the show, again, sorry, it's Friday and everybody's unraveling. Here's what I would ask you: Would you, would you like to learn some British phrases? Blessing Eddie Oye Jr. Uh, am I learning from Greg Miller? No, you're learning from Lucy James, who taught it to me, and I thought it was really oh, good. Yeah. And I wanted more information. Do 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 do. Kevin, hit the hit the intro. Do 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 do. Time for British phrases uh, with Lucy James. So Lucy British James and. Uh, phrases. We still have that Slack channel, me, Lucy, and uh, Jen from when we live together, and we still talk on there often. Mm -hmm. And so Lucy was late to a message, and she says, "I'm aware this is 12 hours late, but I was out larging it." I was out larging it. Blessing oh, Eddie Oye Jr. I want to guess what this means. I was going to say, what do you think larging it is? And then I will give you the explanation because I, I have the actual explanation. And don't look at chat. I'm sure we have some British people in here are going to get in okay. there. Uh, and uh, so then I asked follow-up questions for it. I was out larging it. <sighs> Hold on. I got I to gotta visualize on, guys. It. This is an I'm easy in, one. I'm Come in the on. UK. I, I just got home from hanging out with the mates and drinking a good cup of tea and watching the greatest sport on our telly uh i was out larging it i was out larging it i'm gonna say you you, you were having a great a, a great time out with the buds right like you're going out out to drinks you're going out going out to a sports event having a great time you're out larging it i'm gonna say that's what it means you're not far off and i think mm -hmm. obviously we could dial into this a little bit more but in the the lucy james school of british english what i've been taught here right was on the beers 
So yeah, you're out drinking, mm -hmm. you're out partying on the beers. And I said, ooh, I like that. Talk to me about proper usage. And I gave her three examples of proper usage or, or what are my questions if these were proper using it, right? Mm -hmm. I was getting large with the boys. I larged it up last night. Gonna get large tonight. <laughs> and I said, you know, what's going on with this? And she just said, yes, it's usually larging it. So I think all of those work. Works. Wait, it's, it sounds way more fun to say larging. Wait, hold on. What was the first example you gave her? I was getting large with the boys. <laughs> Chat, if you're in the UK, I need confirmation that that's an actual phrase that actually works in context. She said I could I use it, it that way. I refuse to believe that. But here's are, the thing. Here's the thing. People we are get... telling each other, oh, yeah, I was out larging with the boys last night. Nobody's saying that in the UK, seriously. Are they, chat? I could see it. I, I need could confirmation. See it. I need confirmation. I believe it. I'm just saying... I think if we were out there and we were going to go out drinking and I said, well, I'm getting large with the boys tonight, I think you'd get it. You know what I mean? I'm not saying I'm going to use it there, but I do think, yeah, I, I do like this. I was out large. There's, there's nothing wrong with getting large with boys sure. at all. I think, you know, go out there, live your lifestyle. You know, it, it's awesome. I we're refuse to believe people are out there saying that commonly. We're getting large tomorrow. We're throwing some axes. We're pretty I can't, Dude, I can't God, wait to get large I am so upset about that. I, I hope you guys have a great time. Thank you, Kevin. Suicide Squad's throwing us an axe throwing party, but you'll you'll hear more about this, I'm sure, on one of the other shows. For now, let me tell you today. I love this. Just became a kind of funny podcast today. We're brought to you by Away Manly Bands and Amazon Music, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Number I'm sorry, four items on the Roper Report. Baker's dozen. Doggy style uh, jujitsu in the chat says, I'm getting large with my girlfriend tonight. <laughs> <laughs> number apple. one, number one on the road. Enjoy the beers. Number one on the road for report. <laughs> Will Horizon Forbidden West get delayed? We go to VGC where Andy Robinson reports. Sony is reportedly, quote, leaning towards delaying PS5's flagship 2021 game Horizon Forbidden West to next year. That's according to Games Beat journalist Jeff Grubb, who said on his Giant Bomb show on Thursday that he'd heard via a source that Sony would likely push the Gorilla title to next year and could announce the slip in a live stream around September. Sony previously warned, warned that Horizon Forbidden West might not be released during the calendar year as planned, stating that it wasn't prepared to compromise quality for the health of its developers uh, to get or I'm sorry, quality or the health of their developers to get the game out during a period when AAA game development has been pummeled by the pandemic. Asked if he had information on Sony's plans for its next State of Play live stream, Games Beats Grub suggested on Thursday that the showcase could take place in September to compensate for the potential delay of Horizon. Quote, I've heard, not certain, but I've heard that something's coming in September and dot, dot, dot. I'm trying to debate if I want to be the one to say this dot, dot, dot. I think, the, quote, that game is going to get delayed to 2022. He added, I don't know for sure. I think it's still undecided, but I think it's leaning towards Horizon Forbidden West in 2022. I think they'll have a September state of play to say, here are the other things we're going to have in the fall. Here's a bunch of exciting stuff. Don't worry. But then I think Horizon Forbidden West is going to be 2022. Last month, PlayStation Studios boss Herman Holst, uh, who was speaking as part of the PlayStation blog Q&A, announced God of War PS5's delay to 2022. Uh, refused to rule out the possibility of horizons uh slipping to next year quote so we have currently two very big very narrative driven games in development herman said horizon forbidden west and the next god of war and for both of those they're frankly affected by access to performance capture and talent for horizon we think we are on track to release this holiday season but that isn't quite certain yet and we're working as hard as we can we can to confirm that to you as soon as we can and he goes, as for God of War, the project started a little later. So we've made the difficult decision uh, to push the game out to next year to ensure Santa Monica Studio can deliver an amazing God of War game that we all want to play. With these things, something's got to give. It cannot be the quality of our titles, and it surely won't be the health or well-being of our amazing team. Blessing, mm. this is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like, I say this. I've been saying this. Is this, is this news? You know what I mean? Jeffy Grub Grub's got a source here. Somebody saying that he's heard. He's heard about a state of play in September, and this is how they'll do it. That's what I'm talking about, folks. This is what I've been saying, Blessing. I feel like we've been going through these motions for months as far as 
uh, is Horizon Zero or Horizon Forbidden West is that coming out this year? Oh, there's an upcoming state of play. I feel like there's always an upcoming state of play to where we're uh, expecting the official delay of Horizon Forbidden West to actually happen. At this point, we're in we're at the end of July. August is next week. I have very little faith at this point that we actually see Horizon Forbidden West this year. Like I'm all I'm, it, I I feel like if that was a game that was coming out this year, you would have gotten the date already. You would have gotten like you you would have gotten a a doubling down from Sony saying, "Oh no, expect it this fall. Expect it in October. Expect it in November." I think we're too far out in this year now to 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 expect that game to come out. And at this point, I'm, I think we're probably looking at maybe spring next year for it. I think you'll say that. Yeah, will it hit? It? We'll yeah. see. You know, what well, I mean? that's what I can drive for. It. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> that's another question. My my other question is. Well, if, can I t- chime in one thing before you give another yeah. question? Because I it. feel like this is a, a worthwhile time that I think is interesting about it is that since I mean I feel like all year, so it's really hard for me to put a time period on this. But I want to say in the last three to four months, it must have been when they gave the Horizon presentation, right? Or maybe when the Herman Hulse interview went and we were talking about this, and I was very much saying, "Listen, I think they have the best intentions, but I don't think they're going to hit it." I think the fact that Herman's blinking in, in, in this interview, right, and saying and being honest, and again, like I'm always saying be a human being. I I don't think PlayStation is human enough. So to come out and be like, hey, we're trying, but it might not happen. That's all you need to tell people. Set expectations that way. That's great. Yada, yada, yada. When that had been said, or maybe before then, when I was talking about, hey, like, you know, I just don't think it's going to happen. I think we would have heard something. I think the fact we haven't seen as much from this game means it's not going to happen. It must have been after this. And I was like, listen, it's not going to happen. I had my own source or my own source, or not from Gorilla, but a different source from uh, the PlayStation family hit me up and be like listen from what i know is they're trying they're trying and i'm like on oh, and basically confirmed exactly what i was saying if they're trying to hit this date they are working their asses off to hit this date it's just a thing of will they or won't they and i and i i that is exactly confirming what i had always been thinking they were doing over there and i still think they probably are trying as hardest to hit this date but at some point you come up for air and you have to realize, well, how does the marketing get in line for this? And then what does the release actually look like? And then not to mention, you have to lock this in and produce the discs and do everything else. Yep. It's not happening this year. And I I think for I think it all comes back to the Herman Holes quote saying, you know, something's gotta give. And it cannot be the quality of our titles, and it surely won't be the health or well-being of our amazing team. Right. And you look at Horizon Forbidden West, you look at how well the PlayStation 5 is selling. We just talked about this week it hitting 10 million units, which is phenomenal for a PlayStation, right? That's that makes it the that makes it a faster selling console than even the PS4 was. And the PS4 at this time was selling phenomenally. They can't sell more of these things and when you look at the purpose of first party titles the purpose of a horizon forbidden west is to sell playstations and so for them if they are hitting this point where they're like hey let's try our best to see if we can hit this year if it if it slides to 2022 it slides to 2022 there's a global pandemic there are so many external factors let alone games just being hard to make let alone uh, uh facial capture and performance capture and all this stuff being hard to do right now if you're in a place where you are trying you're you're trying really hard to get this game out by this year for PlayStation in August of 2021. I think at this point you make the you make the call and go. What is the point of trying to get this out out this year at this point, right? Like the 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 worst you risk by Horizon Forbidden West sliding into 2022 is not having as strong of a fall. Which for this fall, how much is that going to matter? We have Deathloop, we have Kena Bridge of Spirits, we have other games uh, that are going to come. We have the third party stuff. We have Call of Duty, and sure, like on the other side for Nintendo, right? Like they got Metroid, they got Mario Party, they got WarioWare that's coming out this year, and then on Xbox you have Halo Infinite and you have Forza Horizon Five. But like, how much does that really matter when it comes to selling units and when it comes to? the importance that Horizon Forbidden West has to your library. Like, I don't think it, I don't think it's that much of an issue for PlayStation if that game actually does slip to next year. Greg, I think you might be muted for me. I don't know if Kevin, if he's muted for you. Oh, you're right. Yeah, no, hey, I weird. can't hear I don't, can't Discord hear. has been doing that lately where it mutes um, in, internally. For some if reason. you open up Wavelink, they might no, be... Remember, that no longer exists for me. I have not had time to track down that problem of why no worries, last no time I clicked on Wavelinker, it's like, I don't know. Where doesn't it matter. Is. You got it. Uh, but no, you hit the crux of the issue from what this is, of course, and that's business. And the fact of they've sold 10 million PlayStation 5s. As fast as they can put them out right now, people buy the PlayStation 5s. Meaning that this holiday season, there is no imperative to get awesome to get horizon out yes it'd be rad to have all of us excited and playing horizon but guess what we'll be excited and playing horizon come 2022 
come the spring, come the mm. fall, come whenever it comes out then, right? Like you won't, it won't matter. Right now it's a, like people are so desperate to buy the PlayStation 5 that if they can get the PlayStation 5 in, I think at 1% of what they need out to the people, they're going to get snatched up and people are going to be stoked to play Miles. They're going to be stoked to play Bug Stacks. They're going to be stoked to play all these things that they've been putting off because they wanted the PS5 version of it. That's the thing is the library is there right now for the PS5. You know, you have Miles, but we, we earlier this week we talked about numbers that we have now for Returnal and Ratchet and Clank. And Returnal yeah. has sold over 500,000 copies. Ratchet and Clank has hit over a million copies. And if you get if, if if you get a PS5, you have games to play within this first year, which isn't usually typical for the first year launch of many consoles, especially when you're talking about PlayStation consoles. Uh, play, PlayStation's first years don't usually look like this, where we have multiple games that people are going to show up for. You have Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which is a console selling game. You have Returnal, which for many people is a console selling game. You're going to have Deathloop this fall, which for many people might be a console selling game. You have you have that going for it. And uh, go for it. Not to mention, and I know it's maybe not for the biggest deal for some, a lot of people, but it is for others. The updated versions of stuff. Death Stranding yep. Director's Cut is a hit, is something Janet's going to play because she missed it before. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut is something I beat Ghost of Tsushima, and I can't wait to play the new Iki Island stuff. Like, There's content there, and like you're saying, this hasn't been the traditional drought after a launch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I saw, I've seen some people in chat mention Halo Infinite talking about how that doesn't have a date as well, to which I would say that is a different type of game. And that is a game that we're constantly getting updates for. Like we, ju we just have the, the test for it going live this week, right? Like they are constantly keeping us updated as far as where that game is at and getting people in there and lead leading into it. But that is a, that is a multiplayer shooter, right? That is something that is going to continue to get updated and fixed and and uh that's something that's going to come down to the wire as it's coming out and i'm like that's a game that could also get delayed into early next year right like i don't think that is a definitive 2021 game i'd be shocked at this point if it did but it's not impossible that, that gets gets delayed as well but i would say that that is kind of apples and oranges comparing where those games are at in terms of them actually coming out this year just because they're very different types of games but yeah for horizon for horizon forbidden west that Play, again, PlayStation first party games are about telling the story of that console, right? They are about selling you on that console. And for 2022, the when hopefully supply becomes way more uh, available and people can actually get their hands on a PlayStation, your, PlayStation is going to want to continue to make the argument that, hey, you need to come to the store and, and buy one of these things. And, for, and Horizon Forbidden West and God of War, Ragnarok, or whatever it ends up being called, are going to be part of that story in 2022. Like when, that, when Horizon Forbidden West finally hits, that's going to be another marker for, for people going to the store and trying to pick those things up. When God of War hits, that's going to be another marker for people trying to come to the store and pick those things up. Uh, and so if you can, honestly, for PlayStation, if you can spread those things out even, that might even make for a better strategy business-wise at the end of the day. 100%. I want to take uh, this story in a different direction. Over in the chat on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, Josh Rodriguez wrote, so is there a rumored state of play in September instead of the E3 level event? Or are we still getting an E3 level conference from PlayStation soon? Of course, Josh referencing the fact that after, even with the Horizon state of play, there was this rumor, this conversation that we are going to be getting an E3 state of play from PlayStation. I need everybody listening and watching to throw that shit out of your head. Like that is old thinking. And I'm not, this isn't me attacking Josh. This is just, I think PlayStation has made it abundantly clear that they no longer march to the drum of what games uh, promotion and marketing was in 2007, 2008, 2009, as you go into these traditional E3s and what it's going to look like. PlayStation has state of play, and they will use state of play when it's time for them to sell their games. And they will use the state of play for Horizon to put other little games around it. They'll do a state of play that is just little announcements and stuff like that. But I don't think until... I don't know when you'll see PlayStation do another... Guess what, everybody? It's certified banger. Uh, state of play it's we're starting with god of war we're ending with horizon you're getting two other double a tent poles that'll make everybody freak out we're doing a revival of this classic in the middle ba -ba -da -da -da. like that's not what state of play is state of play mm -hmm. we know this is very much denny green we know it is who we know who they are we they are who we thought they were like this is very clearly this is what state of play is and it's going to be used to market specific games and put things around it and that's, that's fine that's good whatever but Greg, for you, where where is the the outlet the outlet we see a Spider Man two or a uh, like whatever the next big PlayStation first party games are like? I because I'm I'm with you that it seems like they've shifted. I, I would have expected if they were going to do a big E three style presentation that 
would have been in a July. And in July, we got that state of play, which seemed very standard for what a state of play is, which is to say, like, there weren't the big bangers there, but there yeah. were cool games that we were looking forward to in the fall. I wonder then, what, like, where, where do they come through to announce the bigger titles and to bring the hype? Or is that just a thing that we shouldn't expect anymore? I think they, I, I, no, no, you still expect that. And I think that if there's only two outlets for it, I think it's either, yeah, state of play, you tag it on the end of the front to get people fucking blown away and like, holy shit, that's great. Or you do Kiwi. You do a Keeley thing, whether that is opening out live or whether that is Game Awards. But I would say, like, for something like Spider Man 2, like, you'd be looking at something like Game Awards because you'd want as many eyes outside of your own, right? You want as many mainstream eyes on it as possible. Where, mm-hmm. and again, it's Spider Man 2, so you can drop it anywhere and it's going to go everywhere. But I think that's such a fucking clutch Game Awards announcement, right? Where it goes and it's, you know, Sony Interact Entertainment, Insomniac's logo, a thwip, and then we're off to whatever's going to happen next. Like, yeah, fuck yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'd be not, I I I see that too. Like I think that is for sure uh an option for PlayStation if they want to look into figuring out different ways to announce their big first party stuff cuz like what was it? Last was two or no, the last was one was announced at uh, the end of a game awards or during a game awards uh back in like 2011 or 2012 whenever. Uh I I find it to be possibly a bummer or a missed opportunity if they don't do like they don't double down on having a playstation presentation or a showcase because oh it's a total bummer yeah because i don't know this is in the future i want i want playstation to be like guess what it's jill it's june here we fucking go yeah because they have uh that's like the the amount of hype that we have going into a nintendo direct playstation has that and it's not necessarily there with state of play, but it's there when they brand something as, hey, this is what the next generation of PlayStation looks like. Like last year, we got two of those between the PlayStation presentation they did in July and the PlayStation 5 game showcase they did in the fall. And the amount of fervor and the amount of excitement that those generated felt like something that could only be done if PlayStation sits down and goes, hey, you need to be hype about this. And they they, they, they come with the stuff. And I kind of want them to continue doing that because i think that is something of value that can work to not only not only elevate the big like the spider-man 2s and the next naughty dog games and all that stuff but then that also gets us excited for everything that surrounds it because that's where we got stray that's where we got solar ash that's where we got astro's uh uh, playroom that's where we got plenty of uh, little little devil inside like that's where we got so many different games being announced because they're attached to that core playstation branding and playstation first party uh juice like that did so much in terms of making us excited for the wider wider uh slated games that are coming to the playstation library and so like i i i think i think they should do that i don't know if they need to do that but i do think it could be a big move if they double down on all right cool you get your state of plays which are kind of like these medium level of uh, uh exciting announcements but here are your here's your playstation showcase which you're getting sure. once a year that is going to foreshadow what you can expect in 2022 and beyond. Here are your big titles that are going to make Well, again, PS5. right? You're talking about it like PSX, which is why when that trademark got filed, which I think was just to keep make sure nobody steals their trademarks, it would have been fucking amazing, right? If they were like, if that was the plan. Hey, state of plays happen when they happen and we have a game to sell and yada yada. But we want to commit to annually doing a PSX. That is a check-in on all of our many first parties and second party studios that we're working on. It's cool announcements. It's dope this. It's, you know, revealing new controller cards yada 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 but like mm-hmm. that's just not how playstation's operating and again like this is the normal how we would run it and what we want to do and where blah, blah, blah but playstation's sitting there fucking on piles of giant goddamn like scrooge mcduck duffel bags of money like they don't why do any of this why why do it why you know why break a sweat on any of this and it's what we're talking about horizon of like why worry delay do you guys need more time fine delay it whatever there'll be more ps5s out there there'll be more people ready to buy this game so what do you expect it, one, one, do you expect this PlayStation state of play in September? And if so, what do you expect from it? So this is my thing. You could say, do I expect a PlayStation state of play in August, September, October? And I expect a state PlayStation, another PlayStation state of play soon. Yes, mm-hmm. 100%. I think that's just the cadence they work at. And again, I, I think Jeff is 100% on the money in his sources too of like, it, how do you message this delay and give give somebody sugar with the medicine, right? Like, you can you can just do a blog post that is depressing, but you could also do a depressing blog post and also say, "Hey, by the way, we're going to do the state of play," or put it all into the state of play and you know have a m- m- moment there that gives you a new date and a real date maybe for Horizon that is a, you know like March 
2020 or 25 uh, 2022 like something mm-hmm. like that to really set it and have a whole bunch of cool announcements around it but i would think yeah if you're going to do this like i don't think i don't expect the place the next playstation the, the state of play here would need to be cool Hori- as just is exactly what jeff's talking about cool horizons delayed but here's all the cool shit that's happening in this summer or this uh, uh fall this winter of what you you should be playing on playstation right and you have your you know death loop in there again but hopefully there's a much shorter trailer right you have in there all the indies that are happening right we saw uh kind of just get pushed to september right like you go in there and you put all these different it depends when this is happening obviously but you put in the things that are reminding people of like what's coming to playstation as a whole and what they should be playing but i don't know it'd be awesome to have a banger in it it'd be awesome if that's they're like you know what let's burn a spider-man 2 trailer on it but i wouldn't hold my breath for it i think it would be more about because that's teasing the future the future, I don't is, and that's always the thing of PlayStation. Like, w- with the lineup they have, and you know what we saw this last generation around with PlayStation Four, where it was, you know, Spider Man, God of War, Horizon. Before that, you saw a banger, banger, banger. Like, remember we had that was great, but it was also what was it, like three E threes of like the same games. We're like, we get it, we get it. You know what I mean? It's like right now we get it, right? That Horizon's coming and God of War is coming. Like, we get it. Cool, that's awesome. I can't wait to see those games when I see them, but. I don't need to see them super early. I, I think most people want to know what they're playing this uh, fall. Yeah. Number two on the Roper Report. It might, it might not be this fall, but you will be playing cross-play on Destiny 2 soon. Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. We're going to go to... Uh, oh, I didn't get the full name over here. Uh, Sanya over at GameSpot. Kevin, can you give me a Google on that while I read this so I, we say the full name? Well, I'll try over at GameSpot. Uh, Destiny 2 Season 15 will add crossplay. Uh, in a This Week at Bungie blog post, uh, the studio laid out information about crossplay between Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and Stadia is coming to Destiny 2 in Season 15. Laid out information. That's outrageous. Right. But anyways, uh, <laughs> Season 15 of Destiny 2's Rain Crossplay. With Destiny 2 on so many platforms, you may be wondering what will happen to everyone's name. Bungie will require all Destiny 2 players to create a Bungie name that will stay the same across all platforms. These Bungie names will consist of the player's Bungie name, display name, and numeric ID. Hold on. Kevin's throwing this up for me. It's lo-fi. Oh, okay. So, Sanya Ahmed uh, over at GameStop. the writer here. Thank you very much. Uh, to make it easier for console friends to search for one another, Bungie will reduce the number of characters used in a Bungie name. They addressed how some player names on Steam with extended character sets won't be available. Also, all names will be moderated and filtered uh, to prevent offensive terms. Quote, it is possible that due to removing these characters, players will end up with empty names or names that result in offensive terms. Uh, uh, Bungie explained. Unfortunately, if players are stuck with an empty or offensive name, they won't be able to change it at launch and will have to wait a couple of months. Basically, think thrice before creating your Bungie name. Uh, along with Bungie name, players will have a roster called Bungie Friends, which will have all the friends in one playlist. Uh, players can filter their list based on platforms as well. You can even team up with cross-platform clan members. Blessing, Adioye Jr. Is this Correct. what will pull you back into Destiny? No, but I think this is an awesome thing uh, and good for Destiny players and good for the future of big video games, right? Like, the more we see... Uh, big AAA video games hop on the the crossplay bandwagon. The more that it's going to be standardized, and the more that we can expect it in way more multiplayer games. And now that we're in the PS5 Xbox Series generation, I feel like we finally we finally hit that point to where any new big video game that has multiplayer that's coming out, it's more of a weird thing if you don't have crossplay uh, than if you do. Which I think is an awesome thing. Like I, I've been talking about GTA Online a lot for the past couple of weeks because I've been back into it, and that's been one. Uh, that, that's been a gripe that I, that I've been having over the last two weeks of playing. Is hitting up friends, being like, "Oh, you want to play some GTA Online?" And then being like, "Oh no, I play on PC," or "Oh no, I play on Xbox." And remembering that that is that is still a barrier that exists, right? It's crazy that we've crossed that threshold uh, of now hitting that. And so, yeah, no, I think this is a, a super awesome thing. It's it's super awesome to see games too that. Came Came out before crossplay felt like it was becoming more and more standard yeah. uh actually come out and and have that because destiny 2 came out in uh fall 2017 which i believe was the was the fall before fortnite came to switch and then added in uh crossplay capabilities for for yeah, uh, nintendo and floor, xbox right? yeah. Yeah. and yeah it really broke down that wall and so to see games that ha- that came out before that point start to add that in and uh really make it more and more of a standard thing and make it easier to play with each other i think is one essential two very awesome to see and three very exciting for the future 
And that's the thing that, right, is that, again, you feel for a game like Destiny that happened before this shift, before PlayStation finally bent the knee, before everything changed. Because it was, you're making a game from scratch right now, I feel like it's way easier to be like, all right, cool, we're going to cross-play from the jump. Whereas mm-hmm. if you are a Destiny 2, you're established, you've been, you know, you've had the walled gardens for so long, now you have to try to go back in and chew, you know, bubble gum and tape it all together to make sure you can work this way and come up with your IDs and stuff like that, so... This is, I think, the industry standard now going forward, right? Yeah. You have to do crossplay. You have to do that because it's so much more beneficial to your partners, letting there be an actual audience there for everybody. Does Avengers have crossplay? It does not. Oh, it's one well. of the things that early on oh. in their early on when they were initially launching the game, and everybody's like that. They're like, "Listen, we're gonna get cross generation first, and then we're gonna look at crossplay." But that gotcha. was also before they were like, you know what? A lot of other things we need to fix. This game <laughs> we got to like, yeah, we got to make a well, priority list. <laughs> they're on a good track now. So I, you know, I think I wouldn't be surprised that after Black Panther, whatever their next roadmap had, if they put that on there, because I think that's low hanging fruit, right? Of like, get the audience excited, especially for an audience that, uh, you know, various levels of people playing it, where I think so many people got on a PlayStation, but you see those Steam numbers all the time, right? Not right now. They're actually really huge right now. Paul Tassi's been talking about it. It's free play weekend. Uh, but, you know, usually it's like 500 people playing it at one time, which is not good. Uh, I do have breaking news from you over on Twitter. The one, the only, the Jason Schreier from Bloomberg has tweeted his own article from Bloomberg that reads, PlayStation video game Horizon Forbidden West delayed to 2022. Uh, oh, Jason at Bloomberg <laughs> continues. Sony Corp has delayed the upcoming PlayStation game Horizon Forbidden West to the first quarter of 2022, according to a person familiar with the matter. Previously, it had been scheduled for release this holiday season. And then he goes in to explain what it is, but I assume you already know that. Uh, the setback is the latest in the year, full of delays across the industry, including one of Sony's other big PlayStation exclusives, the untitled sequel to 2018's God of War. COVID-19 has caused production challenges, forcing developers to work from home for months, but the pandemic has also provided cover for developers to bump games that were facing obstacles regardless. Uh, Sony didn't immediately respond to a request for comment. comment. News of the possible Horizon delay was first mentioned by video game reporter Jeff Grubb on the Giant Bomb podcast. So Jason coming through and confirming uh, or breaking the news that it's actually done. But we'll see uh, what PlayStation has to say and when they say it. For now. Hey. Okay, go ahead. Uh, are you about to go to ad? Because I, yeah. I can come back with the I can come back after the ad with, with sure. some questions for you about that. Oh, it sounds great. We'll do that then. Yeah, Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, if you didn't know, uh, I, I had a good segue. I lost it. Don't worry about it, though. You can go to patreon.com slash games, where, of course, you can write in to be part of the show. You can get the show at the exclusive post show we do. You can get every other show live. You can watch. There's a bunch of cool stuff happening on patreon.com slash games. But most importantly for you right now, it's where you can go to get the show ad-free. But guess what, Jack? You're not watching on patreon.com slash games. So here are our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Away. Away is a modern lifestyle brand that creates thoughtful products for every traveler and every kind of trip. They started with the perfect suitcase, crafted with features that make travel more seamless. And now when travel looks more different than ever before, you can count on Away's range of suitcases, bags, and accessories whenever you take that next trip. Here at Kind of Funny, we travel a lot. So every little thing that can make that experience better and easier, we're gonna look for. And Away has done that tenfold. Every suitcase comes with an interior organization system that is super, super handy, and a TSA-approved combination lock can keep all of your belongings safe. There's a 100-day trial on everything Away makes, so if you don't like it, you can return it, no questions asked. Start your 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcases at awaytravel.com slash KFGD. That's awaytravel.com slash KFGD. Next up, shout out to Amazon Music. If you're looking for a ready lineup of binge-worthy podcasts plus free streaming music, you have to check out Amazon Music. Amazon Music has more than 10 million free podcast episodes to listen to, including this show and all of Kind of Funny's other podcasts. You can go check out and review. It's fantastic stuff. No matter what you're listening to, you can even go hands-free with Alexa. You can get the app and enjoy free listening anywhere on all your favorite devices. There's no credit card or subscription required. Uh, Amazon on music isn't just for listening to podcasts. They have thousands of music stations and top playlists to stream for free. You've never tried Amazon music. What are you waiting for? You're going to love it as much as I do and as much as my bro, Cool Greg, does. Start listening for free today. Head over to amazon.com slash KFGD. That's amazon.com slash KFGD to stream thousands of music stations and over 10 million podcast episodes for free. Amazon.com slash KFGD. D. And finally, shout out to Manly Bands. Guys, for the better part of their lives, 
our better halves have been fantasizing about the perfect wedding ring. For us, not so much. And jewelry stores clearly think the same thing. Uh, Manly Bands is here to rescue you from an otherwise hellish band buying experience. Manly Bands offers you and your hand the freedom to look how you want it to in just about every type of earthly material imaginable and even from space. Yeah, Kevin is all about this stuff. There's some really, really, really cool ones. Uh, one of my really good friends, Danny, actually has one of these and it's beautiful. I love the amount of color options there are. I love the, the amount of material options they are. Check them out. Really attractive uh, wedding bands here. To get started, order the Manly Ring Sizer from Manly Bands to ensure that your ring will fit perfectly during work and play. While there might be a 50% chance that your marriage working out, damn, there's a 100% chance that you're going to love your band. It's dark, but hey, stats are stats. To order your Manly Band and get 21% off plus a free silicone ring, go to manlybands.com slash KFGD. That's manlybands.com dot com slash kfgd for 21 percent off manly bands the best damn rings period uh, no. future class of video games blessing at aoya jr what you got to say about this i just had a simple question how are you feeling about playstation 5's first fall after launch now that we have the official delay of horizon for and west it, like going through the fall it seems like the biggest game for playstation is going to be death loop if we're uh -huh. not counting like the big call of duties and and, and stuff like that yeah. battlefields how you feeling about it i i feel like i don't think about it like i just don't think i i think this is another archaic way of looking at what we what what the industry is i feel like this is very much what we would argue about on a podcast beyond in 2010 2011 and i just don't think that's where we're at anymore like i think people buy video games all the time now and i do think don't get me i'm not being i'm not saying there's not going to be an influx in game purchases come, you know, no, the November timeframe. Like clearly there's going to be a spike in holiday, but I don't think that spike leads to us talking about what we talk about in these shows anymore. That is such a mainstream thing that I think plenty of mainstream people are going to be like, Oh, right. My kid really wants Ration and clank for Christmas. Like that's what they're getting for Christmas. If, if I was able to find a PS five, I'm able to get Ration and clank for them. Right. Like I remember the, PS4 falls that were just nothing that were they there were no exclusives there was like you know it didn't matter because that's not what how the the hardcore gamer buys their games and it's the mainstream gamer wasn't paying attention to what was brand new for the holiday right yeah do yeah. you worry about it I feel, I feel like there's been such a shift where when I think for the most part about games that I'm super into and like when I get to make my giant bomb top 10 at the end of the year there's a couple fall games on there, but they're more sprinkled out for experiences I've had throughout the year where like the, like I'm not the call of duty battlefield banger guy. Right. So like, I'm glad those exist and they get there and they, you know, deliver for that audience. I'm not taking it away from them, but I'm I like far cry six. Oh, you know what? And I'm trying to think of fall games this year that I'm like super excited for. Right. And it would be back for bloods. The one that's at the top of the list and mm -hmm. Back for Blood, I'm like, that's awesome, and I'm all about it, and I want to get it. Is it going to be game of the year for me? I doubt it. Like, it's a, it'll be a, a fun, you know, on and off again thing when we go and play it. But and it'll be on my PlayStation 5, too, for me. So it's like, it is this weird thing of does it matter? This is such a again, archaic way of when we had IG and PlayStation team versus IG and Xbox team and these arguments, and like, who's going to have the better fall? Like, does it matter? Because I think we sit here and say, who has the better year? Yeah, and that that is my exact response to it, which I, I look at the rest of the year and how exciting I was for the spring, even this year, even more so yeah. than the fall, when we were getting uh, uh, Returnal and Ratchet and Clank and those big games. And I look at next year, too, and, you know, Starfield uh, is announced for fall of next year, right? Like, that's going to be November 11th. But I look at Elden Ring coming out early in the year. I look at Horizon probably possibly coming out early in the year. I look at the year more as more of a even range and you know, I'm I'm very curious and excited for games next year when we look at the big titles. And you know, we had the the debate a few weeks ago on this show about what's going to be what's going to be the the possible game of the year between Elden Ring, Breath of the Wild, God of War, uh, and Starfield. And now we can even add Horizon Forbidden West to the list of big games that are coming out. And it's like, oh shit! Like, yeah, this year's kind of has kind of been not a wash because we have gotten very exciting games this year. But you know, we're seeing a lot of the games that were supposed to come out actually come out next year, which has made this year slightly less exciting. But sure. when we talk about 
the near future of video games i'm very hyped to see like what those conversations are going to be like when we start to compare the horizons to the god of wars even which is a thing that a, a, a thing that i couldn't imagine right going down in in uh 2017 if we got those games in the same year um but yeah i'm, I'm with you in terms of it not mattering as much anymore and it's just a you know a different way of thinking about it and it, and it you know it's different for every person too. I well, there's one going through here on the chat that I liked, and I lost it, but maybe I can find it. Yeah, then even as you guys are going going through that, I look at uh, Blessing Super Fun Game Release Calendar 2021 uh, that I actually posted a uh, a patch update for on my Twitter yesterday. Oh, a patch a update, great. Yeah, patch point uh, patch 1.05 uh, to update uh, with games that I've already or games that are already out, but then also wanted to add and shift some of the Annapurna stuff that we got from that showcase. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about that next. Yeah, and like, dude. The rest of this fall, if you're paying attention to the actual game releases that are coming out, like, yeah, you're not getting Hold on, horizons. time out, because I need to go somewhere I need you to go with me, all right? Okay. The question I wanted to pull from chat was Justin JB, who says, what about single console homes? PS5, in my case. Not much to look forward to this fall, it seems. Obviously, games are eye of the beholder kind of shit, right? But mm -hmm. is that, like, I'm still stoked for all these indies, all these third-party games that are PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, right? Like, it's not a PlayStation exclusive, sure, it's not Horizon, but even Horizon was, what, going to be 20, 30, 40 hours of my time versus the rest of the time I'll be playing? Things like Blessing? The thing, Things like a bunch of games. So, I, well, to that point, right, I, I do like the idea of the single console home thing because I think the thing, the, the one thing I'll point out with PlayStation for this second half of the year is that for the first time, and I feel like a long time, PlayStation isn't having the strongest uh, fall comparatively. You know, I look at Xbox and I'm like, yeah, a lot of the games on my uh, Blessing Super Fun Games game release calendar 2021 are games like 12 Minutes, you know, Hell games yeah. uh, games like Halo Infinite, games like Forza Horizon 5, and a bunch of games that are coming to Xbox specifically. We just got Death Store. We just got The Ascent. Like, Xbox is having a big splash, and then you look at Nintendo, and Nintendo's also having a splash this fall uh, when you look at games like WarriorWare, uh, Mario Party, uh, Metroid Dread, and then Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Like, you look at PlayStation, and PlayStation, of course, still has a pretty banger fall when you look at things like Deathloop and then Kina and Kina. others uh but there is way there is way more parity and there is way more oh shoot there are things on these other consoles that are very much must plays and that includes Xbox more so than I'd say any fall in the previous generation which I think puts PlayStation in, in, in an interesting place if you are a single single console household which you know probably most people are um but that said when you look through these games a lot of games to be excited for a lot of games to be excited for between the games i i, I mentioned but then even smaller games we just got the artful escape uh the trailer yep. for that and the release date for that which is really exciting you have marvel's guardians of the galaxy which is going to be really exciting it's coming in october you have the bigger the bigger uh, far cry sixes uh, and dying light coming in uh in december let alone a bunch of re-releases you know you're getting ghost shima director's cut Woo! and death Stranding director's cut and gta 5 on PlayStation, it's a pretty exciting fall, regardless. And so I'm, I, I definitely, even though this fall feels like it, it might be a more chill fall comparatively. It's still very much a banger fall, and you're getting a variety of of different types of games, which I think is a really cool thing. Speaking of a type of variety of games, let's talk about number three on the rope report. It's the Anna Perner, Anna Perner, Anna Perna. Interactive showcase wrap up, of course. Yesterday, Annapurna celebrated six years of being a publisher and had a whole bunch of games in a little digital presentation. Of course, you can go watch our live reactions to it, youtube.com slash kind of funny games. But the short version goes like this they showed the Artful Escape, said September 9th for the release date. Artful Escape, September 9th for the release date. Xbox all around, PC, Xbox Game Pass as well. Uh, Neon White, which of course is made from made by Ben from Donut County, uh, is that card based fighting game. Showed a new trailer, uh, gameplay walkthrough of that. That's Switch and PC this winter. Outer Loop, of course, uh, creators of Falcon Age and our friends, Eka. Uh, they announced a partnership uh, with Annapurna for their next game. Then Annapurna showed a memoir, Blue, uh, a journey into memories. It's coming to literally everything, and it's on Game Pass, and it looks awesome. It's this really super sad looking let's go through this uh it looks like a daughter looking back on the relationship with her mother and it looks super sad and i can't wait uh they also then they then announced a jessica mac partnership uh jessica worked on sound shapes and everyday shooter so great games there uh then they showed storyteller which is a game that another greg miller ass game coming to switch and steam where you are given a prompt and then you have to use like in a comic strip make a story out of it to fit the prompt to uh, advance the story 
Uh, they showed Solar Ash again, announced October 26, 2021, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and PC. They then announced another partnership with Ivy Road. It's a new studio from the co-creator of Gone Home and the co-creator of Stanley Parable. Uh, it's also got the Minecraft composer on it. They didn't have any gameplay stuff to show, but that's a hell of a team that I can't wait to see what's up. They showed Skin Deep, which was the protocol protocol where it's like, get out of this thing in a very specific way to save this cat. All right, cool. Uh, they gave some platform updates, which means P Pathless is coming to Steam November 11th. No, I'm sorry, November 16th. Edith Finch is coming to the App Store on August 16th. I Am Dead is coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox all around uh, on August 9th. Telling Lies and uh, Go Roga are both coming to Game Pass in the near future. I think future. it's Goragoa. Is it? Uh, I, 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 when I, I tried to break it down because I remember Goragoa uh, saying sounding weird, and then uh, I put it out there, and I was like, that is not like, what it is. It's that puzzle game. It's that puzzle game everybody's playing yeah. a while back. Uh, Stray is coming early 2022 to PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and Steam. Looks incredible. Uh, they announced a no-code partnership. If you're not familiar with no-code, they worked on the Observation uh, 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 horror games. This will be the next one. It's going to be scary as well. And then they gave an update on Outer Wilds. Wilds Outer Wilds. Uh, it's coming to Switch this holiday. And they announced an expansion, the Outer Wilds Echoes of the Eye, coming September 28th. Blessing, you were part of the reactions with me. They're live on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. But what a banger of a presentation. Yeah, it was so good. Annapurna, I think, is on a different level, and they just seem to be getting be better and better every single year. And when you look at their catalog of the games they have released and catalog of games that, that they are releasing, they're releasing more and more games, and somehow they keep being all exciting games that i think we're all looking forward to like this is one of the, this was one of the rare showcases where every single game here i had some interest in even yeah. games that weren't officially revealed there were multiple games at least three games there where it was legit just hey we're partnering with the, these devs we're partnering with outer loop we're partnering with uh these folks and even those talks even those presentations i thought were very interesting and had me hyped for what was eventually going to be revealed which i think is a very difficult thing to pull off and they they had somehow they they found a way to do it they made those presentations interesting right they 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 put a twist on them in some way and they gave the developers personality which i think is super awesome but yeah dude annapurna we talked about it a, a bit on the uh the reaction stream they you know they're like a devolver digital but also they they have their own identity in terms of the types of games that they pursue because i always i i view devolver digital as we love fast action games we're we have the edge, we're the edgy ones yeah. we're, we're, we're edgy and like we're putting out your hotline miami's your boomerang x's like the games are gonna have a lot of fun with ape like out. those heavy those heavy ape out right like those heavy gameplay games that you like you love to get in and you might be in four to six hours and have a great time with and bounce out whereas annapurna they put out games that you're gonna feel to you which I'm totally down for those types of games. Like I look back at their catalog and I I look at the Pathless, which is a game I loved at the PS5 launch. Uh, I look at Sayonara Wild Hearts, another game that I loved when I played that on Switch. You know, they 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 uh, published Outer Wilds, which I know Andy absolutely loves, and I really want to get back into. Uh, and you know, and they've also like done ports of also they've done ports of games that were previously released but still fit in to that Annapurna uh, uh, style, Hi, which are games yeah, yeah. yeah, which are games like Gone Home, Journey, uh, and others and they just know what they're doing you know they ha they have an eye for eye for quality and the the slate that they have in terms of games that are coming out for the rest of this year and then going into next year and beyond between stray open road open road solar ash artful mm -hmm. escape storyteller like they they're on a roll and so i very much look forward to pretty much anything they're putting out yeah can't wait great presentation go catch up youtube.com slash kind of funny games and please give me a memoir blue as soon as possible uh fourth and final on the roper report to close out your friday number four playdate had a hell of a pre-order campaign we're going to greg uh Kamparak over at TechCrunch. as we've known for about a week today was the day panics charming slash wacky slash curious slash all of the above playdate gaming device and it's crank went up for pre-order the buzz around the little retro inspired handheld seems strong but would it translate to actual sales the answer it seems is a hard yes Panic committed to making 20,000 units for 2021, selling them on a first-come, first-served basis. Any orders after that would still be accepted, but those orders wouldn't ship until sometime after 2020, or sometimes in 2022 at the earliest. According to Panic's shipping estimator, those first 20,000 units were gone in under 20 minutes. Uh, that first 2021 batch went real quick. Parentheses, we confirmed uh, with a rep for Panic that the shipping estimator is accurate and those first 20,000 units are spoken for. Blessing, I know you were interested in Playdate. Did you get one? 
Uh, I do have, or I am getting one. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm very excited for this. I don't know, Greg, where you stand with the play date, but the idea of it, it just sounds super cool to me, not just from the hardware perspective, because I think the hardware is super cool, having the crank, having it be this very unique way to play games. Yeah. Awesome in itself, but the fact that they have a calendar going with it and you're going to get games week to week to week that you get to jump into and just follow a schedule... To me, it just seems super fun and kind of nostalgic if you if you talk about it being this Game Boy adjacent thing and thinking back to the kind of games I love to play on Game Boy. I'm all about this. I am so happy that it seems to be successful, and I, I can't wait to get my hands on this thing. So for me, full disclosure to start the conversation, uh, Jen, of course, my wife, and love of my life, mother of my firstborn child, uh, is working PR for us. She, you pop a gender, her company is doing Playdate uh, PR for uh, for Playdate, for Panic. Um, and so for me personally, I've seen it. Uh, you, I've seen you get excited about it, Janet get excited about it, and I'm like, all right. like It's not it's not like my jam, but what I do think is, I, I love the idea of the Playdate. I don't mm-hmm. think I'm going to be the audience for the Playdate. I don't think I'm super into it, because if you're not, it's a hobbyist machine. It's very small games, right? But what I think is brilliant about it that I think actually might make me play hers because she she pre-ordered one yesterday is this delivery method where you're buying it and you sign up for a season of games, right? That you, you pay for it if, with the device or whatever. You get the season of games though. And then every week, two games come out on, what is it, Thursday? Or is it, I think it's Thursday plus. It doesn't matter. I one day of the yeah. week, they come out. And so you get two new games, which I think is such a fucking cool thing for the water cooler conversation, for the... You, you throw that in your bag and on your commute or on a coffee break or when you're in between calls, you bust it out and you play, you know, these two new games you have every day, whatever it is, kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. And then you're then you have this conversation on Twitter about what this week's crops like this, that and so forth, you know, for us content podcast creators, right? Like, it's so easy of like, oh, yeah, I played two new things on this thing or I did that yeah, or starting. Are they going you know. to be fun? You know, like, yeah, they're going to be they're really, they, really, they have- it's isn't it like the level of game of like, you know, when you go into like a Ross and they've got the little Atari thing that has its own like copies of like. I, yeah, like, yeah, like the one yeah. you get off the thing, right? Like the, like yeah. the all in one video game thing. Right, right, right. Isn't it just that, but spread over time? I, I, I mean, mean it, it seems like they're ahead. reaching out to actual uh, like indie game developers to work on it. And I know that's not going to be every game, but like so, a few of the games so far, they actually have announced like, hey, this big dev is going to be working on a game for it. And so I think yeah, in the at chat, the very least, it's, a, it's a me BT says Lucas Pope return to the Orbit and it's making yes. a game for it. So it's immediate. That's my whole thing is like mm. they have gone out of their way to approach real developers like, like yeah. and not have it just be what you're talking about, Kev, which is a weird cash in thing. But I'm yeah. sure there's going to be plenty of duds, too. I, I, sure. I, you're you're going to have days where it's like, I right, like whatever. I don't want to play uh, Math Simulator 2022 or whatever whatever random games they throw on there but i think that's part that i think to me that's part of the fun too is going in there seeing whatever random game it is and being like oh this this shit is shit or oh man this is a surprisingly fun thing that i'm gonna play for the next week and then be done with it here's here's the thing gary witta super hot on it right very sure. excited can't stop talking about this damn thing but he gary Witta also not a man that has a lot of patience or like calmness with to him so i think Fair. If the first four games aren't like exactly what he wants, he's going to turn on it really hard. And mm. I can't wait for that. I can't <laughs> wait for that. I, I'm, I'm so excited for that. It'll be interesting to see. I, 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 I would have to imagine they lead with their best games to start with. And so you're in it. I, I'm on the Playdate site trying to figure out if they listed all the developers. Wait, they Gary- have them all laid out or whatever. I, what I appreciate, though, is this. The season. Here's the truly unique bit. Playdate isn't just an empty system. Once you set up the Playdate, once you set up your Playdate, you'll start to receive two brand new games every week for 12 weeks. That's 24 free games in lots of genres. Some are short, some are long. Will you love them all? Probably not. Will you have a great time trying them? Absolutely. And again, like, that we always talk, I was talking to these shows, right, when we're talking about the business of video games, right? It is, what is your metric for success? What is your pitch? Like, what, what, I, the fact that they said they sold 20,000 units in less than 20 minutes, like they they have an audience that's buying in. And I think the audience is buying in on it is the Gary Wittes. It is the Jared Petties. It is the blessings. It is the Janet of like, cool, I'm going to get this and I'm going to play casual birder <laughs> for 10 minutes that one day and be like, oh, cool. That was fun and put it down. And then or maybe it wasn't fun or whatever. I just I wonder how long that can last. Sure, for sure. Yeah. And yeah. I, I mean, I think it'll be. It's going to be about keeping the seasons interesting and having folks uh, like uh, uh, the dude from Oberdin coming through and 
creating hype for it because right now it seems like it seems like they're skilled towards a very small audience because they know they're making a very like hip thing that is going to only speak to a certain number of people but the more you can have that word of mouth the more and more uh people are gonna gonna find interest and go oh man should i check that thing out and so if, they, if they're able to t- start off this first season with uh lucas pope from oberdin and then maybe one other interesting developer then that gets interest going and then season two you get in somebody else right maybe you get in Derek you from Splunky or uh like any other indie developer that people uh are fans of get them in and people go oh well I really like this person's game I'll dude I'll buy a um uh whatchamacallit play date for I was gonna call it (laughs) I'm gonna call a, a I'll get a play date for that right and I think you try to build that momentum and build that excitement slowly over time to get people in slowly and then have it be this bigger thing that by its third year, people are are still talking about because they've had these seasonal updates that are super exciting for them. Uh, have they said how much the season two will cost? Or I don't know just... if they've said so. Because I think season one comes with the actual yeah. device itself. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. I don't know how much season two is, but it can't be that expensive, right? It's probably going to be like... I don't I know. If I, I, was this thing expensive? The play date itself is like a couple hundred bucks. So here, the, the, mm. What they have on their website here says the future. It's $179, Kev. Mm. The future. Uh, that's not all. We're lining up more games and we're working on cool ways to distribute them. Stay tuned. We'll also be able, you you will also be able to make your own Playdate games as you, our SDK coming soon will be free to download. No special hardware required. And with our Pulp Game Maker, all you need is a web browser and... Uh, side loading games directly onto the playdate is easy. Yeah, that's the thing. So yeah, it sounds like it's it's going to be an emulator machine. Somebody as well. somebody yesterday did tell me. Uh, that yeah, it, it was somebody. It, it was somebody on one of our shows. Maybe it was Gerard the other day. I don't know. Somebody on and a kind of funny thing was mentioning the other day of like, like, there's already a Game Boy emulator that's coming that looks like it'll be you can yeah fuck around. With. Hell yeah, there's going to be one of those that you can fuck <laughs> around with. I'm going to be really excited about it's going, but. The play date is still so far away, Blessing. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the mom and grop shops, where would I go? You would go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every week. Yeah. Out today, Busta Fellows on X. No, sorry, Jesus Christ. Busta Fellows on Switch and PC. Uh, Vesper on PC. Alone with you on Switch. Uh, Flow Lines Versus on Xbox One. In Bento on Xbox One, Apple Slash on Switch, 10 Second Ninja X on Switch, Alfonso's Arctic Adventure on Switch, Xeno Gunner on Switch, Horror Tales The Wine on Switch, Dungeon of Crawl on Switch, Papa's Quiz on Switch, uh, Coochie, Cook, Coochie. Yeah, I'm gonna say Coochie. I'm just gonna go with it. Coochie. I, think, I mean, look at, spe- at the spelling. I think that is Coochie. It's Coochie, Coochie on, on Switch. Switch. Uh, alone with you on Switch, which I think I already said I did. Uh, Super Squid Lit on Switch. No longer home on PC and Mac. Crimson Coliseum on PC, and then Ion Driver is releasing exclusively on PlayStation today. If that wasn't enough for you, Sega Europe and Two Point Studios are proud to announce the crossover event of the millennium as the immovable object of Two Point Hospital and the unstoppable force of Sonic the Hedgehog collide in an explosion of costumes, items, and joy. To celebrate Sonic's 30th anniversary, players can now enjoy a whole range of new costumes and items for free in Two Point Hospital on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. I'm glad somebody out here is giving Sonic the Hedgehog the respect he deserves. Unstoppable force, Sonic. The way he should be described as an unstoppable force. You love to see it. You do love to see it. Uh, new dates for you. Uh, Murder Mystery Machine will release August 25th on PC and consoles. Uh, 24 Entertainment is excited to announce that Naraka Blade Point will be coming to consoles. The announcement comes with a sneak peek at Naraka Blade Point tutorial being played on PlayStation 5. 24 Entertainment can confirm that they are working on multiple console versions this time. Uh, while they are eager to provide further updates, there isn't a release date for the console versions or a definitive list of consoles just yet. Naraka Blade Point is due to release on PC August 12th on Steam and the Epic Game Store. Uh, the second free update for Monster Hunter's Sto- Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin, Help Coco, arrives on Nintendo Switch and PC August 5th. Skatebird has been delayed just over a month. It will now arrive on Thursday, September 16th. And then Haley Williams at GameSpot reports Future Lab, the studio behind the critically acclaimed Velocity series and the oddly satisfying Power Wash Simulator, is making a new Velocity-style game. The studio has announced a new collaboration with Thunderful Publishing, which will be helping Future Lab bring a Velocity spiritual success to life future lab long time uh supporters of the playstation stuff and i remember working with them quite closely at ign on velocity games so congratulations to them somebody in chat asked uh if sonic is the unstoppable force who is the movable object and come on guys it's mario 
It's oh. Mario. Or it, I mean, it could be Coochie. Coochie has to, sp- has to fight for that spot, though. <laughs> Gotta see what's up. Yeah. Hey, what is uh, ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games to, of course, support the show, write in to be on it with your questions. But you can also write in, of course, to have your name and platform and stuff read on Squad Up. This is where you tell me your name, platform of choice, your name, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you so everybody can play games together. Today, Zach needs help on PS5. Zach's PSN name is Zach is Hot. Z-A-C-K is hot, all one word. I appreciate it, Zach. Zach is hot, says, Doom Eternal PS5 multiplayer trophy boosting. Hey, kind of funny best friends. I need some help with the final few Doom Eternal multiplayer trophies that stand between me and the Platinum. I'm not very good, so getting a kill with every Slayer weapon or just getting 200 kills will take me forever. I was hoping I could get two best friends to help me cheese these trophies in a private match. I'm down to help anyone else who would also like to nab these tedious trophies. If you want to help Zach, who is hot, hit up Zach is hot on PS5 or PS4, right? Because it's got to be probably cross playing though. And you can get in there and you're going to have a great time on what's going on. Greg, I dig your sweater. I was going to mention it earlier in the show, but I forgot to. Like, what is that? Is that like a brewing company? Oh, it yeah, it's, like a, it's Russian River Brewing Company, Blind Pig IPA. One of their Love beers. That. Mm, yes, thank mm. you very much. I'm a big fan of it. Big fan of it. Getting a new Ghostbuster sweater today. I'm very excited about it as well. Oh, I mean, how many is that going to be now? 19? You know, we don't need to go into that. You don't need to tell Jen that I bought it. How many Ghostbuster sweaters can one man have? Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to go into kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong if you're watching live to tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. And we've kept the record clean today as we have gone through and tossed in the little tidbits and spices we needed as we went. So instead, let's pivot over to who's going to be your host next week because, of course, it's the weekend for us, meaning there's no episodes on Saturday or Sunday. But Monday! Kind of Funny Games Daily will return with Blessing and Tim. Tuesday, Greg and Gary. Wednesday, a date that will live in infamy, ladies and gentlemen. It will be Blessing and the return of the Don, Imran Khan. That's right. He is coming back, ladies and gentlemen. Fan bites. Imran Khan will be here Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, him. it's going to be another Tim Tam day. Uh, Tim Geddes and Tamar Hussein from GameSpot teaming up. And then Friday, it will be me and Tim to close out your week. If you're watching live on Twitch right now, Mike is going to start playing some of that Halo that the kids love so much, whatever this multiplayer flighting, whatever the hell it is. And then right after that, we're doing the Kind of Funny podcast live on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games as part of Twitch's uh, talk show and podcast month. So lots going on on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. But if you ever miss anything we do on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games, that's games. You can go to youtube.com slash Kind of Funny Plays, our brand new YouTube channel, and catch all the archives there. For now, Blessing and I have to go do a post show. For patreon.com slash kind of funny games, you can get on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. But if you're not coming over to patreon.com slash kind of funny games to kick us a few bucks and say, hey, you did a good job, no big deal. Until next time, no, it's been our pleasure to serve you.